All right. Banter, 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 banter. Harumph, harumph, harumph. Harumph. Oh, uh, look. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, hi there. Welcome to the Video Affirmation Podcast. I'm Ben Oliver. I'm Justin Plant. We're the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your guides to practicing effective video for business. Today, we're like the Qui-Gon Jinn to your Obi-Wan Kenobi on your journey to becoming a Jedi Master. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today's episode is a little bit of a departure uh, from our usual episodes um, in that it's probably more planned out than most of our regular episodes. (laughs) Um, For you. uh, Yes. Uh, today I'm seeing this document for the is the time. yes today is the well it depends on what you, how you define today this episode celebrates one year of the video reformation podcast hey. all right how about that what are those things called where you, the, uh, like that and they unroll like a big like uh, Odie's tongue um, an elephant no those little like birthday things they go they roll back up a party favor. Yeah, but, I mean, party favor is very general. Yes. I feel like there's a name for it. Um, Should we just Google it and let our audience listen to us Google it? Yeah. Um, Anyway, so what we wanted to do with this episode was put together a clip show of sorts, um, but more of a... uh, I I think this episode actually could serve two purposes. One, it's it's a look back, um, so that maybe if you've only listened to a couple episodes... Um, we might give you some highlights to go back and, and help you select some episodes to listen to. I also, um, my blowouts. plan for this episode, what blowouts. are they called? Blowouts. blowouts. They're called blowouts. Okay. I'm going to get a blowout this afternoon <laughs> with my hair. Um, I, would, I, would, I wish it had more of the little rock hopper. Well, leaves. see, the, the, the penguin things are, are more of a bedhead thing. Okay. Right? So, like... You know, if I shampoo it yeah. and everything and brush it out, it, it, it kind of conforms. This is probably the longest my hair will be for the rest of my life, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I, what my plan is for this episode is for it to also kind of serve as a um, maybe an intro episode for people who haven't listened to the podcast yet uh, and kind of get a sense of what we're all about and some of the insights and I don't know, um, tangents that we offer uh, in our episodes. Um, So happy birthday to the Video Reformation podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, You are now one. So happy birthday. Um, Do we have a new sponsor this episode? We do. Okay. Um, It is Be Real Deals. Be Real Deals, Mm -hmm. okay. I believe that's uh, the, the the main guy from Cypress Hill. Okay. Be real. All right. Be real deals. All right. We'll stick around and we'll uh, hear their spot later on in the episode. When it's finished. (laughs) (laughs) So to kick this off, we've got a long list here of things that have happened since we launched the podcast. Our podcast Mm -hmm. officially launched on June 25th of 2019. And I think it's stunning to think of some of the things that have happened in the past year because they feel like... 10 years worth of history. Yeah, that's kind of the way it's been this past year. It's been nuts. Yeah. One of the first things that happened after we launched the episode was that Jeffrey Epstein was arrested. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, which then led to, I Very guess... Very sad day. His, his, sad day, his, right? No, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Have you watched the Netflix documentary? A couple of pieces, and it's so I, disturbing. I, I watched all four episodes over the last couple of weeks, and I, I never really paid much attention to the case, but it is... I mean, I knew it was bad, but it is... Bad. Outrageous. It's so just, flagrant and like, like I have a total disregard for the law um, or for people. Yeah, and <clears throat> he caught up to him, and and then he died in a cell. Yep, just died there. Just died in a cell. Yep, killed himself. Poor guy. Yep. Um, the day after Epstein was arrested, the U.S. women won the Women's World Cup. Hmm. Uh, that was in July. What else do we have on here? Oh yeah. Trump had his perfect call with Vladimir Zelensky, which then led to a whistleblower complaint, uh, impeachment proceedings, an impeachment trial, and an impeachment acquittal on February 5th. That's four and a half months ago. That's less than four and a half months ago. From now, Mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, my watch isn't working. Why does it say that it's the 6th? 
It says it's Saturday the 6th. Today's the 9th. It was February 5th. So it's four months and four days ago that Trump was acquitted. That feels like forever yeah. ago. Um, what else do we have on here that has happened? Oh, oh yeah. Space Force. Space Force. <laughs> Space Force was founded and Space Force, the Netflix series, was released. Mm. Which is terrible. <clears throat> it wasn't that good. Um, COVID. That I don't know if any of you have heard, but there's this uh, there's this bug going around. Uh, let's see what else. Nats win World Series. Chiefs beat Niners. Super Bowl. Yeah. Iowa can't vote. I Iowa definitely messed up their primary vote. Oh. They took okay. yeah, three yeah, weeks yeah. to figure out how yeah. to how to calculate yeah. all that. Parasite won Best Picture on February 9th. Mm. Uh, yeah, we were still in our upstairs office at that point. Yeah. February 24th, uh, Harvey Weinstein was found guilty of rape charges. God, that feels like forever ago also. Uh, May 3rd, Murder Hornets. Which turned out to not really Nobody's talked about those in in the three days or past three days since they were uh, announced. And then, of course, uh, with where we are now, um, it was just two weeks ago that George Floyd was killed. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Coming into downtown, I hadn't seen downtown. Oh, really? Yeah. Boarded up. Yeah. I mean, I'd seen pictures of it, but I've seen the progress to too because I'll run here. through here mm-hmm. in the mornings, and um, it started with just wood, like a week and a half ago, and then like now it looks, it looks beautiful. Like there's, I, I think, wood up everywhere, but it looks nice. Fantastic <laughs> way to convert. Yeah. You know, protective plywood um, to then, of course, the peaceful protests that we've had here. D- Durham's been awesome. And then Not using, all. and I mean, you have to give, you know, credit to Durham's police. They know their community relatively well, mm-hmm. right? Let the people protest. Mm-hmm. And we haven't had issues here. And now there's amazing art up on the plywood that is uh, covering windows still. Um, I think it's just a great, you know, a great community thing to turn, you know, something that was preparation for some for a as in an article that i read recently pre- preparation for a hurricane that didn't hit mm-hmm. and making the best out of it so um you know long way to go on on big picture issues there but um it has certainly been an interesting year since we launched the podcast and in retrospect of course this podcast is just a small part of <laughs> tiny part of what goes on in the world um but that is what this podcast has experienced in its life, among many other things. Um, wanted to start by discussing um, some clips that our producers have put together for us. I don't know that, that I, I haven't really had a chance to listen to these. Um, so we're going to listen to some clips. Uh, we'll discuss them to varying lengths, depending on how interesting the clips are. I don't know if they're supposed to be embarrassing or funny clips or thoughtful clips or a mix of all of them, but... Um, let's take them one at a time. Okay. And uh, I'll give you a little bit of context here. So I think we're going in order. Um, our Order of what? Order of episodes. Okay. Um, our first two episodes of the podcast were originally a webinar, weren't they? I, well, originally they were a presentation. Yeah. Right? They were a live right. presentation that we gave. That we convert, that we wanted to convert into a webinar, and then decided that like, we could make it, a, a podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they are a little different um, than the other episodes. But here is a clip from I'm, episode. I'm almost afraid to, to listen to it because our first episode couldn't have been that good. I don't know. We're pretty smart. We're smart. I just. I think it's not I, like we started doing this a year ago. Yeah. The podcast just started a year ago. Yeah. Um, well, let's see if Here. we impress ourselves. Right. This is from episode one, and it's uh, the clip is titled "Malpractice." So let's say you walk into your doctor and you say, "Hey, doc, I need a prescription for Valtrex." My guess is, <laughs> you if your doctor me. is any good, they'll take a half step back. <laughs> And, and they're going to ask you a little bit about what symptoms you're presenting, right? right. They're going to diagnose what's actually going on. They're going to run some blood tests, that kind of thing, right? Before they just give you the prescription for Valtrex. Mm-hmm. Um, or if they did then write you the prescription for Valtrex. Thank you. <laughs> Our sponsor is Valtrex. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be malpractice. Yes. So as professionals, 
we can't we can't just go ahead and make the video that our client thinks they need to make without going through the process because we would be doing a disservice uh, to them and perhaps ruining our reputation as well. And we'd make more money if we did that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about principle. So that was from episode one. So we break kind of the strategy into two parts in that episode, diagnosing and prescribing. Mm-hmm. And so that to me sounds a little bit like the prescription part. Well, I guess I guess it's probably the diagnosis part. It's that you, you shouldn't have one and not the other. Right. Um, and, <clears throat> and it's I, up to the professional yes. to, to help the patient. Yes, it is a professional responsibility for a practitioner and I think, and I think that's what, without trying to sound, um, you know, too into ourselves. Yeah, we didn't go to eight years of school for this, right. so but like, we do take this very seriously. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is our living. It is our living, yeah. and um, I think our clients ultimately respect that we take our expertise <clears throat> in this field and apply it to their situations, um, and that ultimately, what's created for them is better off. Uh, after applying a diagnosis and prescription than just letting them walk in saying, here's what I need, and we just fill that prescription for them without looking at. I Mm -hmm. I suppose one way you could look at it is we're doctors, not pharmacists. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay. So humble beginnings. Um, And then we started to get a little bit more focused with our episodes. So here's a clip from episode four, incorporate video in your event. You've you've essentially paid a lot of money to put on this thing to get them there at the event. So you want them to pay attention to, to the content that you're doing. And so I think there, we think, there are a lot of ways for video to be a part of your overall programming just to make it more interesting, make it more engaging, inform, entertain, and educate them during presentations, in between presentations, tease the networking mixer that, that's coming up. Tease uh, the keynote speaker that's coming at the end of the day. Give them reasons throughout the day to plan to attend the to rest of s- yeah. what's going on, yeah. to stick around, basically. Were you there that day? <laughs> I really... <laughs> um, okay, so that was in our, our uh, episode four, which was called... Video for events. Video for events, probably. We weren't super creative with our titles uh, still early on. So that was uh, that was referencing. Well, there are three. We we feel there are three ways to use video for events. One is to promote the event. One is to keep people engaged at the event, and then another one is to um, create maybe more evergreen content for after the event. That, right. that happened. You, yeah. How do you leverage? The event the and who's people. at the event. Yep. Yeah. Um, for, for future content. Um, and this one in particular is one that is almost always ignored, which is using video to engage your attendees while they're there. I mean, we've, we've come up with so many fun ways to solve that problem of, of like audience attrition. Mm-hmm. Uh, by using video, I am desperately waiting for someone to, to to say yes that is important um well and what's interesting though is every event person that we talk to they love attrition it. well and attrition is like their top concern mm-hmm. we lose people yeah right like we we spend all of this money to put it in an interesting city and then we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot because we put it in an interesting city and then we have to to program an event to keep them from wanting to go outside of the conference room, the mm-hmm. hotel, mm-hmm. the convention center, whatever, and explore everything that Amsterdam has to offer, mm-hmm. right? Like so, so you 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 have to. It's an uphill battle that you're going against mm-hmm. that that you kind of create for yourself. Because if you put it in Grand Rapids, you probably get a third of the people who might come be like, right. well what the hell is there to do in Grand Rapids? I'm not going to go to this thing. Yeah. And so then you put it in a, a pretty place that has all of this culture and, culture and, and events and, and everything competing with your event content. Mm-hmm. And so you just have to, it's as simple as keeping people from getting up out of their seats 
and walking out of the building. If you yeah. can keep them in the building and keep them engaged and keep them, I guess, as I put it pretty well, I kind of like that. I don't know that I've used it since. Informed, entertained, and educated. Um, if you can do that, even between your presentations. It, it also helps guide the event in the sense that like things stay on track. I mean, you've got, you've got these little bumpers that happen before um, the next person comes on stage or whatever it just keeps things in a cadence i feel like yeah that it's it's event program it's a part of the programming budget is, is what it should be yeah yeah so if you're gonna go to uh go-kart racing or something if you have a, an event planned after that this should be something that's just like that it's part of the programming of the event yeah yeah good point our next clip is from episode five um where we talked about uh video and sales mm-hmm and this clip is is video is a salesperson. All right, so here is a clip from episode five. Video is a salesperson. V- video will will never stray from the script. It will be exactly what it's supposed to be every time. That's true. That it, it's, video point. is going to be your best salesperson. Video is going to take somebody from just hearing about your product all the way, or or not even knowing about your product all the or way, or even interested in your product. Yeah, they could take them all the way up to the sale and post, but if, if there is the necessity to engage with a salesperson, most people are trying to get 80% of the way through that process without talking to a person. Mm-hmm. So video is a salesperson, and people that are not using it that way or even thinking about it that way, they're, they're losing opportunity to, to help their customers go where they want to go. A couple other things that I either I said and wasn't a part of the clip or didn't say. Um, so yeah, it is it's it is a salesperson in the sense that it's sharing information um, and it's always on script. It's also always there at 2 a.m. in the morning. Mm-hmm. 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> That's usually when that. 2 a.m. is. Um, but it, it's always there. It's on demand, um, unlike salespeople can be. And don't get me wrong, we need salespeople. They're an important part of sure. how business gets done. Um, and you don't have to pay commissions. Those are two other things I didn't <laughs> get to. <laughs> that, but, but, and, and I think that what goes along the lines of it's there at 2 a.m. in the morning is uh, it scales. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, a, a video, a sales video can reach 1,000 people a lot faster than a salesperson can reach a thousand people, a mm-hmm. hundred people, 10 people. Mm-hmm. And it's, again, I, th- I think you're right. It doesn't take the place of salespeople, but yeah, I mean, it, it should be their best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, it should be a way. And I mean, if you think about the old entrepreneurs adage, how do you make money while you sleep? I mean, this is exactly mm-hmm. as a salesperson, if you own your role, mm-hmm. utilize video so that you can make money while you sleep. Yeah. You, don't, you get the commission right. if you're the salesperson sending out that content. Yeah. Yeah, good and, point. And, and I think the, the context for this, too, is, is that, that we typically see the most opportunity for our clients in three silos for video. Mm-hmm. There's video for marketing, video for sales, and video for customer success. There are other ter- uh, opportunities, internal communications, HR, recruiting, those kinds of things. But those are the ones that we see the most uh, opportunity for. But they're all different games. And I think that's something that we've tried to um, tried to express throughout the course of this first year of the podcast is that they are different. A lot of our default conversation ends up going to marketing because, because that is the most frequent use of video. And that's who we work with on yes. mo- in most cases. Yes, and even if we're creating video for sales people to use, it is often going through the marketing budget. Yeah. I think that's going to change uh, eventually, but it's yeah. it's it's going to take a while. It depends on how the company's set up. Like if your marketing team is a lead gen team specifically, that's one thing if they're if they're the content team that's another if mm-hmm. they're um you know supposed to be do, producing collateral if they're a branding team like there's all different ways that marketing can be used and and it just depends on how your organization is set up but yeah without a doubt video should be part of the sales process so episode six um episode six shows me that our early episodes were based on what we knew <laughs> 
because uh, episodes four, five, and six were um, video for events, video selling, and episode six was a video content audit. And to me, that reminds me of our starter packages that we offer. Mm -hmm. the, the things that we've done enough and a lot to have been able to kind of productize into a repeatable process. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because these are episodes four, five, and six, it just it's just clear to me that um, looking back, that's what we were going on. Well, what can we talk about? How can we get to 10 episodes? Yeah. And here we are at episode <laughs> 30. Um, so here is some conversation uh, from episode six, uh, benefits of a video content audit. I think the, the, the fourth big benefit now of, of doing a video library audit is to get rid of anything that's not helping you. Anything that's old or irrelevant, if it can't be updated with a simple metadata change, like a mm -hmm. title, a description, whatever, like we were just talking about, then it's probably doing you more harm than good. If you've got your event recap, if you've got any event recap videos, just get rid of them. Uh, we've talked about that before. If you've got an event recap video for Business Con 2016 on your YouTube channel or in your embedded video library, my guess is nobody really gives a shit about Business Con 2016 event recap video, given that it's, what year is it, 2019? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I get that people sometimes have an emotional or financial attachment to video content that's been made, and so they feel like they want to get as much out of it. I mean, we hear a lot about evergreen content, and if you're following the manifesto, you're creating specific videos for specific audiences for specific purposes, right? Then you're probably not creating a whole lot of evergreen content. Mm -hmm. So if it's about something that happened a couple years ago, or God forbid, it's about you know version 1.3 of your app and you're on version 3.7 now, if somebody stumbles upon, I mean, at some point you're actually probably fighting against yourself from an right. SEO standpoint. Yeah. So if somebody searches for, you know, the name of your app and they find, because it's been there longer, the demo video for version 1.3, they're missing out on all the functionality that now version 3.7 has because that one's just going to show up first. And they're going to say, oh, well, this is a demo video. They don't know. Prospects don't know your product like you do. Yeah. And so they're not going to know. So just get rid of that stuff. It's, it's hard to say goodbye but sometimes you just have to cut it loose. Well, in true me fashion, that was two minutes and four seconds mm -hmm. of one basic point, mm -hmm. which is if it's old, get rid of it, mm -hmm. which is the two second version of that two minute clip. <clears throat> I think- I feel like I've said everything in the clip yeah. that, that I need to say on that. Well, I think, I think that's just one of those things that like video as a practice that emphasizes you have to stay with it you can't just send it out there and it's all going to take care of itself there's consequences for you know clutter yeah all right uh episode eight um episode eight video doesn't live in a vacuum. video doesn't live in a vacuum so this is probably after our starter packages we probably started looking at the manifesto for uh, oh, sure. individual pieces yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for episodes. So this is, so video not living in a vacuum is, is part of the, um, um, the word has escaped me, uh, integrated mm -hmm. uh, part of the manifesto, which, you know, everyone knows like the back of their hand. So episode eight, video doesn't live in a vacuum. As you said, as I say, video doesn't live in a vacuum. I mean, that's, that's, at least two parts of our manifesto, right? It's the integrated part of the manifesto where not only does your content not live in a vacuum, but your video content speaks to the other content, right? So there needs mm -hmm. to be brand consistency. Mm -hmm. That's part of um, content experience, right? You need to have the same uh, likely tone of voice, mm -hmm. right? The same imagery, the same, you know, all those same kind of uh, in, almost intangible pieces mm -hmm. um, that make your video content just as much a part of your other content as it all is. I'm so glad I didn't listen to these clips beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> um, because my setup for the, the clip was basically exactly what I said in the clip. Oh, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but it's it's a, it's it's a good time for us to bring up the manifesto, and and for those who again aren't uh-huh. frequent listeners, um, uh, the the video reformation manifesto is is us redefining the word video. Video being a verb, not a noun, a practice, uh, not a deliverable. We we throw around the term practice so much. Um, because it's what we preach every day that oftentimes we forget that not everybody we're talking to knows what we're talking about with that. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, our clip from episode nine is one that uh, David suggested we use, I believe, strategic versus creative. Uh, so this one, um, yes, this one is from a, a an assistant producer an associate producer uh yeah yeah i guess so so from episode also nine, a guest he's he has been a guest we'll get to his clip uh in just a few clips uh strategic versus creative from episode nine so tell me tell me what is give me an example of a strategic concept and then help me color that in with some creative sure so a strategic concept is uh, purpose, audience, uh, where we're going to be showing this, what, what we wanted to do, what are the goal, what are the KPIs we're going to measure with this thing, right? So it's a, it's a video that introduces our brand to the market in a uh, human and fun way, mm-hmm. right? I mean sure. that that could that could be kind of a, a strategic concept, and its purpose is, uh, you know, brand awareness piece. And it's going to be distributed through paid promotion on LinkedIn and YouTube pre-roll, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that's kind of your your strategic framework. We know why we're making this video. We know what we want it to do. And, yep. So then you've got to kind of take those elements and figure out what are because I believe there are probably infinite ways. What are the what is the best way, or what are the best ways to creatively do that, right? So you can key in on introducing your brand in part of that description, mm-hmm. right? Okay, well, that's something we have to do. So what are the elements that we need to, is it about you know, our top three features and benefits, right? Is that how we're gonna introduce our brand slash product? Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, you kind of get those points that you wanna make, but then the other part of the description was in a human and lighthearted or fun way, right? So then you can start making decisions that, well, maybe it makes sense to actually show people in this as opposed to maybe go with animation right so there are all kinds of of uh, they they happen quickly and they happen a thousand times as you're developing a concept but i see kind of creative decisions as you've got one of of two or three or four options and you get to go the direct you've got that map that strategic concept is that map that guides you to the right creative decision Mm -hmm. well which of these options live action animation animals animals people employees actors is it a host is it are we creating a character those are just who could be in the thing right so which one best serves your strategy well if your strategy is to humanize let's eliminate animals Mm -hmm. let's eliminate live action right so so the creative treatment then instead of being a video that introduces our brand to the world in a fun and lighthearted way your creative concept is that thing that, that kind of opens with, we open on a an empty warehouse. Sure. And there are papers strewn about, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's less about camera direction. It's more about getting a sense of what this thing actually looks like through so some kind treatment. of written treatment. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> is this like, is this going to be like that? The Saved by the Bell episode where they just show a couple clips and there's not a lot of context. Probably. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What I like about... What I said there? (laughs) What what I like about what I said. what What I like... No, actually, what I like and only part... And the only part I want to comment on is when you said animals. Uh Animals, yeah. Because I feel like half of the time we're recording this podcast, we're trying to trip each other up. (laughs) Maybe not deliberately, but we're just like... Like, we're so used to talking to each other and throwing... I mean, I remember early on when we would actually play the game going into a pitch meeting or something oh, like God, that. We haven't done that in so right? long. Right, where, where, like, you know, I would I would challenge you to bring the word hubcap 
into mm-hmm. the conversation. Mm-hmm. And you would challenge me to bring the word broccoli mm-hmm. into the conversation. And so we'd be in this pitch meeting and kind of zoning out, and then I would Plastic hear you say, no. Hub, no, they would have no idea. And I would hear you say hubcap, and all of a sudden, it's like, all right, he got it. What was my word? Broccoli. I don't bring <laughs> broccoli into this. Uh, and I feel like animals was, uh, was one of those little, like, you know, all right, stop talking animals. Um, was, no, I, I mean, I think that I think that is one that, that actually um, is an important distinction between what we're talking about when we say strategic concepts and, yeah. and what most people are used to with concepts, which is creative concepts. That's a part of our, our process, but... Um Shall we move on to episode 15? It's our last straight up clip before we get into our guests. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, so often is this like, this is just never considered. Mm-hmm. Customer success is rarely touched with video. They have one video, or they. I always think of my wife because she's in that account management world and she comes home and tells me problems all the time. And I'm like, don't make me say it, Jen. <laughs> I have a simple solution for you. I have you. a solution for you, uh, uh, but that requires you to become rolling. my client. I just think that as a, it's an ignored revenue center for the, for a lot of companies. It it kind of plays you know second fiddle. It's always always a backseat. What other other metaphors can I draw up here? Mm-hmm. Um, but video is a great stepchild. Video is a great way to to give that team what they need and then just let them do their thing and, and then bring your focus back to sales or marketing or whatever because you don't need to you really don't need to create like you might for marketing you don't have to create new stuff a lot of times because it's like frequently asked questions how mm-hmm. often do frequently asked questions get changed or how often does onboarding differ from you know one month to the next there right. might be some new features but again that's a you make the feature set video and send that out um so I, I would love to do a lot more with customer success teams. I, it, I, I have something to tease after the clip, but let's play the clip from episode 15. Customer success is a revenue team. Why would you say that customer success is a revenue team? Well, I think they're ultimately responsible for a number. I think there's two angles to customer success. One is managing churn mm-hmm. and keeping customers from leaving, whether it's putting out fires or managing relationships, especially since so many things are a subscription model now. Right. I mean, a lot of the thinking about a subscription model is you get someone to commit to it and then they forget that they're doing it. Yeah. But you almost need to look at it like every month you have to sell them because any month they could decide, I don't want to use this service or product anymore. And then I think the other part is, and, and this is the more common side, is those upsides sell opportunities Mm -hmm. with customers. So keeping customers from leaving minimizes a loss of revenue, but then upselling existing customers, whether it's upgrading them to another level of service or selling them additional products, depending on what type of business you're doing, those existing relationships are oftentimes the lowest hanging fruit Mm -hmm. because they've already committed to, to your product or service. And so oftentimes it's easier to land and expand. Did you already cover your point? (laughs) I feel very strongly about customer success as a revenue team. And I think it's the perfect opportunity, especially since it's the first birthday celebration of the Video Reformation podcast, Mm -hmm. that I officially announced to the public that we will be launching a new Video Reformation uh, asset uh, in the very near future. Um, We've been working on it for several months. Uh, COVID put us back a little bit, but um, we will be releasing the Video Reformation Show, which will be a monthly uh, video uh, talk show of sorts. Experience. Um, Yes, a video experience where in the first episode, um, my kind of main uh, essay, if you will, if that doesn't get your blood boiling, I don't know what will, but the main point is actually about uh, utilizing video and customer success and customer success as a revenue team. Um, and fortunately, though I did not reference this podcast episode when I developed that uh, piece, I do say the same things, which is good. <laughs> yeah. uh, at least I'm not contradicting myself on that. So uh, keep an eye out for the Video Reformation show. Um, if you notice, we're going with the whole Video Reformation theme here. Our uh, newsletter will be uh, is soon to be re Uh, branded as the Video Reformation Newsletter. Uh, So hop on over to our site, storyboardmedia.co, if you're not subscribed to that. Um, uh, So yeah, the Video Reformation Show coming soon to a screen near you. 
Um, so those are our top five episode clips um, that we wanted to go over. A little bit of a uh, experiment, a, a little sampler of <laughs> yeah. uh, of sorts uh, of some of the things that. Uh, I talk about and Justin um, uh, puts in the appropriately timed rights and yes and mm hmms. Um, also sets me up with questions when I think he's going to say something, but he's just asking me something. Um, maybe it's proof that our promo editors have a bias toward me. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm their favorite. The producers, and so just, the producers, the editors, you know, whoever. Yeah. Whoever on our team is it who, who puts the. Uh, promotional pieces well, together there's one thing we know favorites change quickly around here that is true that is true um speaking of favorites uh we'd like to share some of our favorite guests that mm. we have mm-hmm. on the podcast how about that segue the first guest we had we didn't go far um we went to our content strategist in office here david olson to talk mm-hmm. about wasn't that a year-end thing? Was yeah. Was that the two-part video trends and trends and yeah. Yeah, twenty twenty video trends yeah. and, and predictions and stuff. Um, he's a super smart guy, and I'm glad he's going to be a part of future content or more so. Yeah, um, he's he's done a lot of writing for us, either with projects or for um, blogs or whatever. But he is the guy who puts together the newsletter the every newsletter. other week. If you're a subscriber, but. He he just has a, a great wealth of knowledge too that we haven't really been able to or haven't shared much at all. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing him see more of him. Yeah, well let's um, let's take a listen to uh, this clip from David Olson um, that's called Data. Which oh god, I know where this is going. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. I feel like David was about to make a good point. Yeah, Data. The so, robot. Uh, David, how do you feel about data as a part of this discussion? Well, I always thought that he should have like his own standalone series. Spin-off? Yeah. Oh, my God. That would have been so good. Because over the course of the series, he did sort of evolve a little bit into like more of a, an emotional being. Yes. Um, I mean, you can probably speak on that better than I can. But Yes, I can. I'm for the purposes of this podcast. Yes. Data and the marketing team. It is the job of the marketing team or the CMO, or for that matter, the head of the company, to actually start creating that content based on where you identify as the weak spots in that customer journey. I guess is where I was getting at. Okay. So you know, you should know where along that where you have the most trouble. Maybe you maybe you don't have any problem getting the initial interest or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's fine. So start focusing on where along that journey people are getting lost or dropping out, whatever. And so you can start to take a more strategic approach to how you're prioritizing where you're filling in those gaps. And I think it's like you were saying, it's not the sales team can't be expected to make all this content, but the marketing team can. They shouldn't just be blindly making stuff because they think they had. Oh, I had a I had an idea today that we should do this thing. Well, what is that based on? You should be basing that on data. where you're actually the data, where you're actually seeing uh, the need for it, and your CMO or your CEO should be giving you the tools you need to actually take a look at that. Which is another thing we always talk about with video. It's going to give you the best and the most variables, data-wise. Yeah. Wait, turn that around. <laughs> I was worried at the beginning there that it was just a two-minute-long clip about data from Star Trek: The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I think he's right. I think he should have his own show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I, I I'm just so excited to see how how robots and machines are going to extract information from from viewer behavior. How much they watch, which segments they rewatch, what part they share, when they stop watching. Mm-hmm. There's just so much that you can pick up and it just, there's so much more going on in every single frame with audio and visual. 
and then you've got 24 of those for every second and then however long your video is it's just it's such a rich medium and it, there's we're just at the tip of the iceberg for for extracting viewer behavior data yeah i, I mean there's a um there's a lot in the moment um that we're able to track now in, in terms of viewer data um, whether they rewatch a video, which portions of a video they rewatch, how much of a video do they watch. Um, we're able to assign it to individuals from a lead scoring perspective, pass that information on to sales or uh, even the marketing team if they're trying to qualify uh, a lead. Um, but I think there's an awful lot that you can, that we're going to get to. Um, you integrating data from video viewership and other behaviors that those same people take. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of talk about cookies and trackability and all those kinds of things with what um, Chrome is doing, but we're going to find a way around that stuff because that, that information really is so valuable to put the right things in front of people at the right time mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and in the right place. But imagine if you can, if you can take someone's prior purchases through your site with certain viewing information, you know, uh, value of them as a customer, how long they've been as a customer, um, these types of videos that they watched or this particular video that they watched multiple times or this part of a video that maybe featured this product mm -hmm. because you know they rewatched this, they might, and all of that stuff being uh, processed by AI yeah. is gonna then be able to put whether it's another video or a banner ad or a well-timed email or uh, whatever it is in front of them at, at what would probably be statistically the perfect time for them to then buy and even, that thing. Like you were saying, the lifetime value of, the, of that customer or a projection of that, that, that can also help you kind of set bids on, on like, mm -hmm. okay, that, then he's worth a dollar twenty-five to get him to watch this. Um, and I'm willing to do that for two months, and so maybe someone else is willing, like sees that there's a higher lifetime projection value. Um, yeah, it's just interesting how all that stuff is going to fold together, and yeah. who is going to own it? Google, probably. Facebook. Google and Facebook. Our next guest was Josh Barker. Good, good man. Good man. Hilarious, hilarious man. Good at his job too. Yeah, it's a nice on, bonus, right? Yeah, been on set with with Josh a couple times, or I don't remember. But um, but yeah, he he's really good at his job. But he's uh, he's also a hell of a fun guy to be. Around. Yes, um, as you may or may not hear from this clip, uh, which is Josh Barker uh, talking about his role as a producer. Today we're going to jump into the role of producer. Why don't we start with what you do kind of sure. day in, day out? The department I work in is in production. We work closely with the account side and help them understand what's feasible from a budget perspective. A lot of times a budget will come in and an idea will come in and they don't match. I think that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. and the client doesn't need to understand that. To them, we have a great idea and this is what we're willing to spend for it. And the account person's going to say, you got it, we're going to make it work. And then they're going to turn to us and say, please, God, help us make this work. We've already said yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. how do we get the client what they want and what's been promised within budget and make money? That may be yeah. why I'm so conflicted as a person, because I have to be the account person and the producer. Right. <laughs> most you're, you're the person who has to both say, yes, we can do that and, and figure no. out how we can <laughs> do that. Have you ever that, turned your own budget down? <laughs> You've submitted your budget and you're like, this is too much. <laughs> That's a good episode. Yeah. <laughs> He's a fun guy. I think it's important to note that that if you ask 10 people what a producer does, you'll get 10 different answers. Mm -hmm. But they all mean the same in, they, in some roundabout way. They do. And, and, and so many of them just change slightly based on how that organization is set up. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they're the ones responsible for making Final. sure the thing can get done. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to tie that to a manifesto uh, piece, to me, that just brings up attainable. Exactly what I was thinking. Right. What, I mean, right, and attainable isn't necessarily, oh, I only have $5,000 to do this. You could have $100,000 to do it, but if it's a $200,000 idea, 
how do you how do you cram as much of that two hundred thousand dollar idea into a hundred thousand dollar project? Mm-hmm. And you know, like or, someone said in there, and and still make money, or have the way of us to say we can't do this. Right. We need to come up with something different. Yep. Our next guest uh, that we had on was uh, Ryan Carey. But I'm going to do Mars's clip first, because that's how I put it in this order for some reason. Um, so another uh, in our series of <clears throat> kind of what is a or hiring a hiring a producer. Uh, part two of that series went to um, hiring an editor. Mm-hmm. And we brought in one of our favorite freelance editors, uh, Mars Kennedy, to uh, talk to us. And we got into a little bit of a discussion about story. Mm-hmm. Um, And this clip is from that discussion. Here she goes. And I would also say like, you know, there's an aspect to good storytelling, which is about like leaving certain things out or, I mean, like we don't need to see the kid walk to the ice cream stand to buy the ice cream, to walk away, to have his first bite, to drop it. You know, you can start with the problem. And I think a lot of the stuff that I do, which is like, you know, customer reference pieces for people that have used technology or products that have been, that they've had a great success with, it usually starts with them being like, you know, before this, you know, A, B, and C, and it was really horrible. <laughs> so like, you know, you're starting with their problems. So you're like, Oh, like, how is this going to get fixed? So you're already intrigued. You've, you know, you see the ice cream on the ground, you're already intrigued, you yeah. know, it's about like what's going to happen next. Um, so I think a lot of times like starting with, you've got to start with something that's going to draw them in. And a lot of times that's like the problem that they faced in their Mm -hmm. organization or, you know, the ice cream already on the ground. That's a perfect example of, of why I've really grown to like having guests. And I, I remember when we started this podcast, um, we looked into um, some services that like help you start your podcast. And that was that they were basically saying your podcast is you having guests. And, and, and I want to share our perspective and our beliefs and our approach through this. So I didn't want to just go to a guest thing. I didn't necessarily yeah. just yeah. want to provide um, uh, an opportunity for other people to talk. Well, if there were just you or just me, that could get pretty bland. But we're two, two completely different people. And so it's like yeah. we're always interviewing Animals. each other. <laughs> um, yes. But... but but these to me, like the, the few guests that we have had, I mean, that that's something that because, you know, basically everything I'm going to say and I know everything you're going to say for the most part. Sure. And I don't think either one of us would have thought to put um, Mars's point that way. Guests provide a different perspective from outside of these walls, you know, these proverbial walls of our office. Um, and, you know, oftentimes they they totally click with Mm -hmm. the way that we like to operate and to me that's that's validating right i believe what i believe about this based on experience and you know um kind of what i know about this space but um it's always nice to hear somebody say something that that adds value to you know your arguments and your perspective yeah um and i think she did a great job um uh, in that clip in particular uh she was a fantastic guest i would like to have more guests on the podcast Um, we have had one other guest. Um, we brought in Ryan Carey um, from Better On uh, right at the right. I think it was the day, the last day before the stay at home order kicked in. And so I think we tried to the day it kicked in. Um, so we were trying to crank through. Um, oh, yeah. An episode, but we had Ryan Carey on it. Of course, at that point, like the whole Zoom revolution had just begun. Mm -hmm. So people were finding themselves on all kinds of video conferences and whatever. Um, But Ryan is kind of an expert in um, being better on video as an individual, your employees, whatever it is. And so um, he brought some interesting insights uh, to that. But also because he was one of the first guys at YouTube, he has just been in the digital video space for quite a while. Um, and in this clip, he talks about two-way versus one-way conversations. To talk about kind of like, you know, why and what, you know, why should I even, why do I need to be on video? You know, I don't think it is about that. My sort of philosophy is that um, two other totally separate planets that we're, that we're learning now is two-way video and one-way video. And 
that would, you know, if you've worked in the video space, that makes more sense. But if you're kind of new to it and yeah. just like trying sure, to, break. you know, pl- play with it, it's like, well, I don't, I don't know. Like a camera's a camera. So mm-hmm. my, my thought is that, you know, two-way video is a Zoom call. It's Google Hangout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One way is like you guys are saying. You record yourself on Loom. You record yourself. You put it on YouTube. You know, it's two different muscles because when you're on a two-way call, there's someone there. Like you, like mm-hmm. us right now, this is this is a two-way call. Um, yeah. But I will point out that I'm actually recording myself with you guys not with me. So I'm exercising the muscle that I've learned over the years by talking one way and imagining you, mm-hmm. the, imagining you here. Sure. So anyway, what it comes down to and what I uh, really like to tap people on is to, like it all starts with, with one way. I think one way video leads to effectiveness in two way video and it's not the other way around. Like the core Say muscle again. to Say build. Say it again. I think that that the core muscle to be built lives on the one way video side, and that will translate to a two way sure. video. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Versus, you know, if I sit on Zoom calls all day and I turn on the camera to make a YouTube video, I'm not going to be any more effective, probably. Whereas if I'm doing it one way, I'm getting practice. You know, imagining my audience. Really Absolutely. trying to, because that's what it's all about. Like part of the muscle you're building here is yeah. that imagination. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so what I like to tell people oftentimes is like my process is you get on camera, you practice one way, people fumble through it, they feel super awkward, they get really nervous, they watch themselves, they talk to me about it, they talk to one of our coaches about it. You know, it's pretty uh, vulnerable stuff. And then I break the hard news to them and I tell them, stop making it about you. Mm-hmm. This, is not a, this is not about you. This is about yeah. them. This is about your audience. And this is about giving. And it's about giving your gifts, giving your energy, giving who you are to the camera. And mm-hmm. when people can make that shift, that's when the door is open. And they're like, oh, no one's even watching. No one even cares. Like people's attention spans are so, so short. No one's watching me. Like I've got to bring my A game yeah. of being on camera to really grab someone. And with that comes this, you know, like they begin to open a, a part of themselves that they never used before. And it's usually kind of beautiful because mm-hmm. that's when they they kind of turn on and they're like, oh, this isn't as scary as I ever thought it would be. Um, this is awesome. So when people say, well, why do I need to do video? It's like, you don't have to do video, but you should invest the time to kind of do the personal development that I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm. Give it Because we've been living in such a disconnected world for so long because of technology. You know, one of the things that I've been trying to focus on for this many years is like, Video is what we have at our disposal to bring people back in touch instead Mm -hmm. of becoming so inside of themselves. So kind of one of my goals here is to bring people out again and record it and show it to them. Now, he kept us quiet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, that's some. uh, Yeah, I, I, I would have I would have never thought to describe it that way but everything he said is so spot on Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're doing it too right i mean even when this was just an audio podcast you still you still imagine your audience listening right Mm -hmm. and and that just you know makes us better for all of those you know zoom conversations and, and everything else that we have to have but the more we do it the more we you know, get better. And, and, and I'll tell you, I, one of the thoughts I had beginning of this episode that we're doing right now, listening to these clips, I used to hate hearing, I mean, most people hate the sound of that. Like they love to hear themselves talk, but they hate the sound of their own voice kind of thing. Like I used to hate the sound of my voice, but by, by doing the video Mm -hmm. series that we've done before and this podcast and whatever, I've just gotten so used to, seeing myself on on screen and hearing myself talk that you know i get that people feel that but like we've completely wiped that away yeah. and 
you know, just n- not that I love how I sound or how I look on camera, but like I'm used to it. It's not off putting like it is for so many people and like it was for us at the beginning, or at least for me. I think that the practice of the one way video. So here we're doing one way video where we're recording and then we're sending it to you for an asynchronous, you know, viewing experience at any other point um, where it's just you watching that. But the practice of, of doing this and being on camera for a, a later audience or um, doing it at home, sending, you know, go videos and stuff like that, it makes you better at the two way conversations. You, you learn how to present and form ideas in, in this new visual format. You're, you're, you understand the importance of lighting and sound and some of those things that are just technical that you just kind of mm-hmm. get over that hump and then you're fine. But like, um, but it takes a lot of practice, and I just wish people would, you know, practice more. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's, I mean, as, as we always talk about, and sure we're biased, you know, video is the way of the future. And I think more so after the pandemic. I mean, I know people are starting to go back to offices, but, you know, not everybody's going to go back to an office. Mm-hmm. People are going to be used to having two-way video conversations um, as part of their job. And, um, yes, the more you practice the one-way, the better you'll be at the two-way. Mm-hmm. Um so that's a highlight of, of what we think are some of the clips from our best episodes and, and certainly our best guests, uh, all of our guests, um, which I believe brings us up to our sponsor break. Mm-hmm. Do we have do we have it in? Yeah. Uh, did the courier get here? Yep. Courier got here. Um, so like I said in the beginning, this uh, this sponsor is the Matt method. Yes, that is what you said at the beginning. Yep. Like I said. Mm hmm. Everybody remembers that from the beginning of the episode, the so, Matt method, uh, right? I'd like to thank them for, for being a part of this episode today. And you ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. They're ready. All right. <clears throat> We're living in unprecedented times. Some might even call them uncertain. With all of that anxiety, it's no wonder you're having a tough time making sales. So where can one turn to mellow out? Who can one lean on to help with those sticky, icky sales? What can one do in a time like this to just, you know, chill? Well, from the world's most renowned sales performers and trainers to Silicon Valley's elite startup founders, everyone's talking about the MAT method. The MAT method. The MAT method takes the secrets of dealing weed that your old roommate Matt used, used to use and applies them to the world of business. Go on. With the MAT method, you'll learn valuable lessons like meeting your top prospect in the parking lot of an abandoned shopping mall after dark, showing up to your prospect's apartment and overstaying your welcome, and once you've closed the deal, convincing that new customer of yours to give you just a little taste of the very product or service you just sold them. The MAT method is available for about 30 bucks for an eighth of the course, uh, but he'll give you a quarter of the course for like 50. How generous. Uh, since you guys are buddies and whatnot, you know. Uh, or if you want the whole course at once, he can do it for two hundo. <laughs> Just don't tell anyone you got it from that. <laughs> the Matt Method. Get it now at thematmethod.com or behind the shed at your stepdad's house. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Sorry, I had a little uh, tickle in my throat there. Mm. <sighs> okay. Um... Yeah, you've been using the Matt method for uh, for quite some time. Yeah, yeah, I have. How uh, how does it how does it work for you? Um, I kind of forget what I'm doing half the time. Sure, but that's part of it. You just don't you, right. you get so in your head sometimes, and yeah. it's just nice to not. It's nice to mellow out yeah, and mellow just out. like you know be present. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Most of our business, I believe, is based on the Matt method. It that's is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although when you come back from sales meetings. Uh, I never seem to get any of uh, that little bit of of what you just sold them. Um, is that is that something that I, I didn't even well, know about? That, that. That's is that something in the sales oh, field? Okay, so it's not bring it back and share with people. That's just you don't want it on you, out. right? Yeah, that's true. You don't want to carry it yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't you don't want to you know intend to distribute it to anyone. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. 
Thank you to Mad Method, a new sponsor. Speaking of sponsors, uh, I think it's time that we that we maybe make an admission <clears throat> to our to our listeners about our sponsors. Um. So, the podcast has been going bonkers, like really, really well. But we have had some trouble bringing in sponsors. Uh, Ever. Um, so occasionally, every time we have, we we may have made up a couple of these. Um, yeah, ourselves. every every time we haven't been able to sell a sponsorship spot, we've come up with we made, made potential some of business, and I think that it's kind of a um, kind of a service to our listeners of like just keeping ideas flowing of new things that they could, you know, new ventures or yeah. And and so I guess for the regular listeners, they they they've caught on that we have a new sponsor every week. Mm-hmm. Um, now they know that maybe 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 some of those aren't real. It's hard and to tell which ones are real or not. That's true. Um, I do think there's been an interesting um, evolution to our uh, spots. Mm-hmm. Um, and we would like to play some of our, our favorites. We've tried to balance these out. Um, it all started... So in our first two episodes, again, which was a presentation converted to a webinar, converted to a podcast, we hadn't really come up with this idea. And so the first two um, the first two sponsors, I guess, that we had were Tapo Chico, mm-hmm. because you were drinking it um, uh, while we were recording that episode and, mm-hmm. and drank it nonstop. Um, and um, I, I suppose Valtrex that we heard from from episode one. Um, I think we had a bottle of mead that was a sponsor. Mm-hmm. At, um, uh, maybe episode three. Um, but it all started back with um, Clyde Burlingsworth. Um, and here was our first, the first time we were faced with not having a sponsor ad ready for the show and had to come up with something ourselves. Clyde Burlingsworth's foot and baking powder. Put some in your shoes, then put some in your cookies. Clyde Burlingsworth's foot and baking powder coming soon to an Etsy shop near you. Yeah, man, those are the days. Uh, that's a that's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, the following episode, you followed up. Um, well, you mean yeah, some of uh, some of mine uh, are ill prepared. For the following episode, you you followed up Clyde Burlingsworth with waffles. That was it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I uh, threw everybody off a little bit there. As will be evidenced by uh, who reads the main spot, some of some of these are more prepared than others, (laughs) and some of them are just a like improv exercise lobbing something yeah. across the table to see what happens. Um, uh, another of the more prepared ones... Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club... This is not going to work. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, that was dumb. I don't know why they agreed to sponsor us. Let's move on to our sponsor for next week and just move okay. to this week. Move see up. if I can find it. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to our new new sponsor, I See Dead People, the Mid-South's premier cryogenic freezing lab. Freeze your dead relatives now and we'll thaw them out when there's a cure for what ails them. Icy dead people. Spoiler alert, Bruce Willis was dead the whole time. Which you followed up with. That's one of the best puns with. That is a good time. That is is a good one. And of course, for the sake of time, we didn't want to include all of the discussion we have about these. That is some of the best stuff. But, you know, it's, it's, this is about our sponsor ads. Um, especially this next one for Cozy Tozies. Cozy Tozies. Canadian loonies, which I thought was a little a little <laughs> Very odd. heavy. Yes. Very heavy to send. That could have yeah. saved a lot of money, and we could have got a lot more. If yeah, just... we, we do accept wire transfers. Yeah. yeah. But it's this weird, I can't quite figure out, it's like a sleeping bag for your foot. Kind of this, um, maybe we can describe it to our listeners here. This one happens to be black, but there were other colors. So it here. looks like a sock. Yeah, you could say that. To me, it's just a sock. Oh. 
Well, maybe put it on. Give her a little. Where do I put it on? Do I put it on my ear? That's what I'm most. What's the name of the company? Cozy Toesies. Cozy Toesies. What if I put it on my foot? Well, that's where I've been wearing it. Oh, you've been wearing it. Well, yeah. then I definitely want to put it on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, give it a try. Okay. <laughs> Taking then, off my shoes. Yep. And just uh, taking off the socks I already have. Oh, you right. You have these too. Yeah, look, mine are mine are red, white, and blue. Those are cool. Yeah. And now I'm putting on this previously worn <laughs> sock-looking thing. <laughs> oh yeah, people are watching. <laughs> and uh, over the over over, over the. So sock. you have another. Oh my sleepy. god, my toes are so cozy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. You're like dripping right, like just oozing into your foot. Yes, my feet sweat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So So it's a sock. It's is a what sock. it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it makes your toes cozy. Right. It makes them fall asleep. Oh, I see. Yeah, you feel that? Like so like comatose? Comatose. <laughs> you should have came up with that name. That was that was a good one, Ben. Thanks. <sighs> All right. So I'm gonna put it back on my. I'm gonna. Yeah, uh, your t your toes look cold from here. It was. Now I can't feel them. Anything else in that uh, ad? Ah, uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks to Cozy Toes and their special Coma Toes line <laughs> of socks. I get it. Apparently, they're socks. Nowhere on here does it say sock. It's a well structured piece. Yeah. <clears throat> um, still, there was a there was a a concept there that I still haven't been able to pull off. Um, but I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring it around sometime. Oh, good, <laughs> good, yeah. New name, same name. No, different. I mean, I, I, it's, it's uh, you'll see when it, well, when it gets there. You know, that's what keeps our audience coming back, just to hear who our new sponsor is every week. Sometimes um, I will admit. They can be a little bit overwritten, um, like this example. Wilford Brimley's mustache wax. For that full-bodied elderly walrus stash. Simultaneously thickens your mustache to push broom consistency, dyes it an irreversible snow-white color regardless of your natural hair color, and instantly grows your whiskers just long enough to cover your upper and lower lips, even while talking. Wilford Brimley's mustache wax. Pick up a tin or ten at your favorite mustachery today. There is now a legal disclaimer. Got it. This product has not been approved or tested by the FDA. However, early reported side effects include constant smells of oatmeal, even when no oatmeal is present, curing diabetes, or early onset diabetes. By listening to this advertisement, you hereby waive any and all right to legal recourse for any side effects experienced while using Wolford Brimley's Mustache Wax. Wolford Brimley's Mustache Wax. Be more curmudgeonly. Perhaps a bit overwritten. Hmm. This, this is a contrast in styles. Yeah. Um, although you have come up with some some well structured uh, spots like this one from Steep. Have you seen uh, season four of Rick and Morty? I have not. Anthony, did you finish the Last Dance documentary? Marge, did you see the last episode of Westworld? I'm not caught up on Westworld. Of course not. How can you? <laughs> You can't possibly watch it all. In the age of infinite media, there's always too much to consume, too little time to do it, and the consequences are staggering. Imagine, on your next virtual happy hour, a book club, or FaceTime with friends, and you have to sit this one out because you don't know how the last dance ended. The Bulls won. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Spoiler alert. Now you don't have to. The answer to all of your media consumption and adequacies are finally here. Introducing Steep. Steep helps you watch it all without even opening an eye. Visit steepwhileyousleep.com for details. Now that one I recall had quite a quite a good discussion mm -hmm. afterward. They, I, I know in fact, we that's were... probably where the the best part of the whole ad is. Oh, I I, I think so. Again, uh, it's. David's the only one who I believe has been through any like professional improv uh, work, um, but uh, I do think we are spending half of our time trying to throw each other <laughs> off, uh, and that usually comes after. And, and it's worth noting to pull the uh, the curtain completely back um, that we don't share 
these made up sponsors with each other. So when we record, uh, this is everyone else hearing it for the first time, unless of course you bring in a ghost writer, uh, to help, um, uh, in, in some occasions, uh, that ghost writer oftentimes is David who did provide, uh, his own sponsor when we guessed it, uh, had him as on on a guest. Um, and so here's our, our last sponsor spot that we want to, uh, feature it's millennial and me. Millennial and Me at Home Generational Testing Kit. If you're a marketing professional, you know there's a lot of talk about millennials and even more confusion about what actually defines one. Hey, for all you know, you could be a millennial. (gasps) Well, wander no more with Millennial and Me, the world's first at home generational testing kit. From the makers of 23andMe's second cousin by marriage, Millennial and Me is the easy and effective way to determine once and for all which society-destroying generation defines you. Simply spit into the provided test tube. A little more. Keep spitting. Come on, you can do it. It's all the salt from the bar. Fill her up. That's right. Fill her right up to the top. Answer a few simple questions like, have you ever owned a Blink-182 CD? Do you have an insatiable desire to kill things like power lunches in the real estate market do you crave experiences send back your millennial and me kit and our team of much younger yet somehow more accomplished scientists will analyze your sample steal your dna and determine generational status in a short six to eight months oops so we say steal your dna we aren't going to steal your dna that probably shouldn't be in the copy millennial and me at home generational testing kit available exclusively at aldi's Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty good. There were two that we don't have to go to the edge. This is maybe more of an honorable mention list. <laughs> um, I like. I really like the idea of a cheese fast. <laughs> and Gooey's cheese fast. The, yeah. the writing wasn't that great. Um, it was, um, uh, from from what I heard from our producers, uh, that made their, their quick short list. But in listening back to the spot, it wasn't as good as they remembered it being. Yeah, yeah. Um, rounding second heavy petting zoo. Specifically excluded because somebody once mentioned that they couldn't forward our podcast episode because that was the on to their boss because that was the um, that was the customer success that one. Was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so also on the initial short list, but ultimately decided not to be included because um, you know we want this episode to we want anyone to feel comfortable sharing. It was a little racy. I imagine that's why off-color lighting was not... <laughs> Same reason. Um, so if you want, if we've wet your whistle and you want to um, hear those ads, I would direct, which episodes would we direct them to for that those? That would be 20 for off-color lighting. Okay. That is 15 for rounding second heavy petting zoo and 10 for Gooey's Cheese Fest. 10, 15, and 20? Mm-hmm. Ooh. So we got a nice... We got a nice every five episode cycle there. Oh, and you're in. Uh huh. <laughs> Not on the initial short list. Very quick, <laughs> very quickly rejected. <laughs> Along with the bleep bleep uh, dog oh God, something. That was a bad. There have been some bad ones. <laughs> um, so you know, if you're just interested in our sponsor ads, maybe we can put out a special. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll do that for maybe, the second. Maybe we'll birthday. release a CD or something. Yeah. That would be one of my Desert Island CDs, probably. Um, now, another... Are we uh, still going? Uh, we are. Another little bit um, Another little bit that, that we've just started doing more recently is um, how we are your guides on your journey to practicing effective video for business. It wasn't anything that ever, like, consciously was decided as a thing, but it just kind of started. And, and uh, so here's a little super cut of how we like to... Uh, uh, how I like to uh, introduce us uh, at the front end of our episodes. Welcome to the Video Reformation Podcast. I'm Ben. I'm Justin. We're the co-founders of Storyboard Media and your co-captains on this love boat of video bliss. Just think of us as the Tenzig Norgay to your Sir Edmund Hillary as we strive to reach the peak a video for business. We're like the Roald Amundsen for your expedition to the South Pole. This week we are the Sacagaweas to your Lewis and Clark in your quest for westward video expansion. It's a manifest to the frontier destiny kind of, of video. Thing. Yes, just 
straight to the Pacific. We're like a guide on a journey to practicing effective video for business. <laughs> Nerd alert, we're like the Virgil to your Dante on your journey through the inferno. Mm, it is hot in here today. We're like the Gene Kranz to your mission to the moon. We're like the Dr. Fauci to your escape from the coronavirus. We're like the Pi May to your Beatrix kiddo. In, I'll Google that. In your journey you. to becoming the world's greatest assassin in the Kill Bill films. I think that pretty much brings us current. I don't remember what I did today. I mean, today. is that like seven or it's about yeah. ten? Yeah. I mean, there was there was a there was an evolution there, but yeah, I look forward to more of those. Yeah, those are fun. I I, I got some I got some stored up. Um, so yeah, that's I this think, is all just kind of developed on its own. It's kind of grown into its own like funny little creature. Yes, we've got gigs and bits and. Things that are serious, but if, I, but if I go back to to one of the earlier clips, I do believe <clears throat> that we are informing, educating, and entertaining mm -hmm. our audience, mm -hmm. however big or small it may be. I like to think that we are providing quite a bit of of insight, and in a in an educational or in an entertaining way, educating people. Mm -hmm. um, what are your What are your big picture thoughts looking back on? A year of the podcast. I didn't think we'd make it a year. Um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of us for, for sticking with it. Um, it. It's been a year, and uh, if you're a listener, you know that this comes out every two weeks. Uh, but this is episode 30. 30. So there are 52 weeks. Doing the math, there's a couple. Well, we, we had four on the launch day. We had the oh, first right, four okay. episodes out on launch And then day. we maybe, over the holidays, repeated an episode or replayed an episode or something. I don't know that we did. No, oh, we had enough stored up. Yeah. Oh, good for us. Um, well, some of my, wait, was it the question? Some, some of my favorite mm, overall memories. takeaways? Takeaways? Um, I, I enjoy it a lot more than writing a blog post. I feel like yes. every blog post I try and write ends up sounding exactly the same as the last time I tried writing it. And they're completely different topics. <laughs> it always ends up like okay. the same thing. Um, I just go to your sponsors as a, as evidence to support that point. <laughs> <laughs> Waffles, cozy tozies. Um, but takeaways. Uh, yeah, I don't know. R r r ruminations. Uh, Memories. I I do like having guests. We've gotten we. This has been a good opportunity for us to get some of our thoughts out that I think haunt us or are just swimming around in the ether. For us to have to articulate something, um, but it is. I, I'm looking forward to having more guests on in the next year. I think that's something we're probably going to work towards. I think we're going to find different ways to work David in. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be creating a little bit of like as you said that sort of news style show um which will just be another form of content under the video reformation brand um that's why we got the neon sign i've always just wanted one and it's, it's why i signed <laughs> off on the neon sign um but uh yeah I, I am looking forward to more guests. If you guys, uh, as a listener, know someone who either could challenge some of our thinking or or supplement it, um, I would love to hear some of your it, ideas. Even if that's you. Yeah, yeah. I, I know who some of our listeners are, and uh, if you feel like you'd be a valuable guest on the podcast, we'd, we'd love to have you on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I said, I didn't think we'd make it a year. I think you're absolutely right that it's easier to do this I mean, we do prep, um, but we prep on a bullet point level mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we know so much of this. When we try to over plan it, um, the conversation gets kind of stilted. Mm -hmm. um, and when we're exploring the ideas and uh, trying to verbalize them, because so many of them are things in our head. And I think that's the kind of what you were touching on. The reason that so many... Um, agency principles specifically but but any you know subject matter experts are encouraged to write content is to organize those thoughts mm -hmm. in a way 
And I think having to have a discussion about them is just as valuable as writing a piece about them. Mm -hmm. uh, writing a piece may be more efficient, but especially the way that we do our two-way conversations, uh, I think it allows us room to to think outside of the bullet points and just come up with come up with ways to describe things that oftentimes we end up then using that same verbiage with clients or prospects. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when I was in sales, one of the most exciting things to me was was sitting there and hearing myself explain a feature or a benefit in a slightly different way one time mm -hmm. in front of someone and then being like, ooh, yeah, that's how I should explain it from yeah. here on out. And that's where I find the most value in this is organizing the thoughts but but coming up with different ways to say things so that they are more accessible because we we really do see it as a reformation we really mm -hmm. do see it as taking video from just a thing to be made to something to be practiced mm -hmm. um and and that is um again maybe we're being very serious about it but it's our livelihood it's it's what we know it's what we um so we've decided to commit our lives and careers to uh, is this space. And, you know, we're, we're converting people, you know, one at a time or one company at a time to practicing effective video for business. But the more that we can share that, the more that we can, you know, get our feelings out there and 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 verbalize those some of those abstract thoughts. I, I think that's where I find personal value mm -hmm. in this podcast. Any challenges for the uh, the upcoming year that you want to impose? Uh, like having to say the word broccoli or hubcap <laughs> in every episode? Yeah, actually, that might be a fun, fun like uh, listener engagement activity. What, is for what like, was the magic day, word of the episode? That yeah. day, they need to email us a word, and we'll choose one, and <laughs> we can listen for whirly gig. Um, I like. <clears throat> I like when we do Instagram live with these because uh, it does allow people to one find the content if they're not subscribed to the podcast, but also there's a lot that gets edited out. Mm. Uh, well, maybe not a lot, but but sometimes there there are big chunks that are edited out, and and I have no problem with people seeing yeah. those things. Yeah. I would like us to be more proactive in um, kind of a reg as things start to return to normal uh, office wise. I would like for us to to promote those on more of a regular basis, so that we can actually build up more of a a live audience. Um, and again, even if it's ten people who are watching, you know, every other episode, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd, I'd really like to engage people that way because I'm I'm just as comfortable uh, doing it live as I am having it edited. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also challenge our listeners to let us know what they want to hear us talk about. Um, you know, we didn't say it in this episode, but in all the others, we'll keep coming up with topics. Um, but if it's not what you want to hear, then, you know, what's the point? So let <clears throat> us know. Again, we have gotten some suggestions and we do have those queued up for, for future episodes. Uh, what about you? Challenges? Yeah. I'd like to uh, to challenge Anthony. Okay. I'd like to challenge him to step out here in front of the cameras for a second. Come on out. Come here, Anthony. You can, bring your, you can bring your headphones because it's part of the get-up. Come on over here. Ooh. He just yeah, I didn't even, committed I didn't even to expect it. him to, to come bring a chair and everything, but uh, but I just wanted to... He knows he knows where the shots are, so he's framed <laughs> he's himself out. Well come on over. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you to Anthony for putting in all the, the work in, in making these videos and, and setting up the cameras, the studio, the audio, editing, all of it, all the, look at these fingers right here. That's, uh, that's where all the magic comes from right there, so. Wait, I just got an HR complaint. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I wanted everyone to see yeah. Anthony. We appreciate him here and he does a good job, so. And he hates being seen, so we'll probably never see him on camera again. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Anthony. Anthony. All right. You know he's going to edit that out. Mm. Yeah. Just have to review the episode before it gets launched. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that's enough for our... Do we need to sing happy birthday? To my... Oh. <laughs> do we need to sing happy birthday to your son? <laughs> to 
turned two yesterday. Uh, and let's see, this is going to be coming out when? June 30, I want to say. June 25th, something. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, my other son is turning five next week, Wednesday. So, yeah, we could sing Happy Birthday to the show. Well, I'm glad you're so excited about it. Let's. Maybe I tell you what. Can play us out. Why don't we challenge our listeners to sing us "Happy Birthday" and share those videos with us mm-hmm. of them? So, to all of you who watch and listen to the podcast, record yourself. Yeah. Record yourself uh, singing "Happy Birthday" to the Video Reformation podcast and uh, send it to us, and we will share them in one of our upcoming episodes. Yeah. And, and I don't care if you miss it. Like, if you're listening to this in October, go ahead and do it. <laughs> uh, we accept yeah. birthday gifts and, and oh, yeah. cards and those things as well. Yeah. Belated is fine. Mm-hmm. Cake. Even old cake. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, so send us your videos of you singing happy birthday to us and old cake. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, I think that's our episode for today. Uh, rate, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get you your do podcasts. The Matt Method again. Uh, yeah, let's hear from the Matt Method again. <clears throat> We're living in unprecedented times. Sure. Some might even call them uncertain. Mm-hmm. With all of this anxiety, it's no wonder you're having a tough time making sales. So, where can one turn to mellow out? Who can one lean on to help with those sticky, icky sales? What can one do in a time like this to just, you know, chill? Well, from the world's most renowned sales performers and trainers to Silicon Valley's elite startup founders, everyone's talking about the MAT method. method, method. The MAT method takes secrets of dealing weed that your old roommate Matt used to use and applies them to the world of business. With the MAT method, you'll learn valuable lessons like Meeting your top prospect in the parking lot in an abandoned shopping mall after dark. Showing up to your prospect's apartment and overstaying your welcome. And once you've closed the deal, convincing them that to give you a little taste of that very product or service you just sold them. <clears throat> the Matt Method is available for 30 bucks for an eighth of the course, but he'll give you a quarter of the course for like 50 uh, since you guys are buddies and all. Um, or if you want the whole course at once, he can do it for two hundo. Just don't tell anyone you got it from Matt. The Matt Method. Get it now at themattmethod.com or behind the shed of your stepdad's house. Thank you to the Matt Method. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. It's, it's been working well for us, I know. Um, and, and obviously many of uh, Silicon Valley's startups and, and such. Um, there may not be revenue positive or anything, but um, sure. I mean, sure they may not be a legally registered business. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that was our year in review. I imagine it's um, about two hours long. I feel like we started recording about two hours ago. Yeah. I think some of the clips may be cut out. So um, I don't know. Thank you for maybe we should just add a recommendation to listen to this one at like 1.5 speed. <laughs> In the show notes or something like that. Um, all right. Happy birthday yeah. to the Video Reformation Podcast. You, you are one year up? old. Sure. All right. Go for it. On three. One, one two, two, three. three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, the Video Reformation Podcast. Happy birthday to you. Can you auto tune that? <laughs> I should have brought a little party hat too. Yeah. I have some. Oh, yeah. That's, I, I thought about it, but I didn't have it. I also have some. You have some and didn't think about it. I have it. This is how this works. All right. Promo. I got to get to the car.